Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can apply formatting to a shape, you need to click it to select it. If selecting a text box or word art as a shape, ensure that you click on its border so that the border appears as a solid line. That indicates that the shape itself has been selected and not its text. Once the shape has been selected, you will see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear within the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. At the left end of the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab is the Insert Shapes button group. The large scroll box within this group contains access to the shapes that you can insert and functions in the exact same way that the Shapes button on the Insert tab within the ribbon does. To the right of that are three additional buttons, the Edit Shape button, the Change Shape button, and the Edit Text button. For shapes drawn by hand, such as the scribble shape, you can click the Edit Shape button and select the Edit Points command from the drop-down menu after drawing the object to display its editing points. You can then click and drag the editing points to change the contours of the selected shape. Then either select the Edit Points command again, or press the Escape key on your keyboard to set the new contours of the shape when you are finished. You can select a shape and then click the Change Shape button, then click on a shape in the drop-down menu that appears to substitute the shape that you click for the selected shape. You can select the Edit Text button to add text to a selected shape or edit text within an existing shape by placing the shape into its text editing mode. In the Shape Styles section, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and line of the shape. Scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box to see the preset shape appearances and click on the one that you would like to apply to your shape. You can also use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to customize the appearance of your shape. Use the Shape Fill drop-down to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, pictures, gradients, or textures. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable areas such as lines and arrows. To select a fill color, Click one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, select the More Fill Colors command to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. Click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or click the Custom tab and then select the color that you want. If you need an exact Pantone color match, you can select that from the Pantone tab. At the bottom of these tabs, you can also use the Transparency slider to set the level of color transparency to apply. If you opened the Color dialog box, click the OK button once you've made a choice to apply the selected color. To fill a selected shape with another sampled color from within the publication, choose the Sample Fill Color command from the drop-down menu, and then click the color within the page that you want to sample. If you apply a fill effect to a shape and then want to remove it, you can select the No Fill command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu to remove any fill effect. You can insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect by choosing the Picture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu of choices to open the Select Picture dialog box. Here you can select a source for your picture and then navigate to and select the picture to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. You can apply a gradient to a selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the Gradient command within the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu and then clicking on a variation of the preset gradients that you want to apply to the shape. To add a texture to the shape, simply choose the Texture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu and then click on the texture to apply from the choices shown in the side menu. You can also click the Pattern command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu to open the Format Shape dialog box and select the Pattern Fill Option button within the Shape Options section, scroll to the bottom of the dialog box to select both a foreground and a background color from the color pickers that are available. Then click on the desired pattern to apply within the Pattern section and click the OK button to apply it as a fill effect for the selected shape. Back in the Shape Styles button group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab, you will find the Shape Outline drop-down button. The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines within the shape. This is also the button that you will use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. 
If you click the Shape Outline button, you will see that you can select a color shown in the color palette of choices to change the line color of the selected shape. To remove the line color, you would simply select your shape and then choose the No Outline Choice from the drop-down menu of the Shape Outline button. To change the width of a shape's outline, make a selection from the side menu of choices that appear when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command in the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Dashes command within the drop-down menu. If formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, you can change the endpoints that are shown on the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the arrows command within the shape outline buttons drop down menu of choices. Also, like the fill color, you can select the pattern command to create a patterned line. You can click the shape effects drop down button to select a shape effect grouped by category to apply to the selected shape from the drop down menu that appears. The button shown in the Arrange button group of the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected shape. Click the Wrap Text button to select one of the preset text wrapping options. If you have overlapping shapes, click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons to change the order that the shapes overlap each other within the page. You can click the Align button to choose one of the available alignment options. If you have multiple selected objects, you can click the Group button to group multiple selected objects together as a single unit. You can click the Ungroup button to break a grouped shape back into its separate shape components. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for a selected shape. Also, like images, you can use the Size section to resize a shape. You can use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the height or width spinner boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected shape. Alternatively, you can enter a numerical measurement directly into the height or width text boxes. You can also click the measurement button to display the measurement pop-up panel where you can enter very specific measurements for the text box or shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.